Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of the Web Delix podcast, where we're on a journey to uncover the truth about plant medicine, to get rid of the myths, and to change the narrative. I'm your host, Scott Mason, and I am so excited to be going on this journey with you today. It all starts right here in this very first episode. You know, all of us want to make a difference with our lives. And by going on this journey with me, we have the possibility to not only make profound changes in our own lives, but to also make change in the larger world. And very possibly in the lives of those that we care about the most. And so if you're asking yourself why I'm so excited about this, that's the answer. And if you're beginning to ask yourself why you should care, I'm going to start by sharing a little bit of my own story. By the time we get through that, I think you'll understand why you should care too. I actually was born in England. You might not be able to tell that from my accent, but it's true. My mom was a graduate student studying languages, and my father was from Trinidad and was in England to study law. They had an affair, and out came me. Now, at that time, uh, an unmarried woman having a baby, particularly with someone from a different race, was looked down on. And so my biological mother put me up for adoption. There happened to be a couple of African-American people who were in the service who were in England at the time. They adopted me and brought me back as their child to the United States, to Kansas, as a matter of fact, where I was raised. And although the act of adoption was an act of love, the family circumstances that I grew up in were very, very tough. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as the season goes on. But I'll say right now that my family situation was very chaotic. It was full of unexpected and sometimes extreme violence. Like any kid, I coped to the best of my abilities. But I didn't have the skills to learn how to cope in a way that wasn't maladaptive. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And as I grew up and became an adult, those poor adaptation skills played out in every aspect of my life. I was so vigilant and obsessed with something coming out of the blue and hurting me, emotional violence or even physical violence, that I was defensive all the time. I was angry. I didn't understand why the world had put me in the life situation that I was in. And so I also became very spiritually disconnected. And these problems magnified as I got older and older. They really impacted my professional development and my career. They also impacted my love life not to mention my ability to make and keep friends. I'll never forget one day I was eating some steak and I realized I couldn't swallow it. I'd forgotten how to swallow, as crazy as that sounds. And I went to doctors who checked me out and there was nothing physically wrong with me. Eventually I started seeing a counselor and she, as well as another therapist that I worked with, eventually got me to understand that this problem with swallowing, as well as other issues that I was facing in my work life and in my social life, were really the byproducts of trauma that I had suffered in the familial situation that I had growing up. I was diagnosed as having post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD as well as extreme anxiety. And it was keeping me from anywhere near being able to fulfill my potential. 
Now, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm always going to keep it real. And as a matter of fact, throughout the entire run of this show, I promise you that I will not only be honest with myself and with you, but with my guests. And I'll make sure that the guests don't BS you either. I was determined to be honest with who and what I was, to make a change, and do whatever it took to become intact again. To make that happen, I was in counseling, sometimes multiple times a week, for 11 years. Eventually, I came to a place where I felt whole and I could function so much better in society and within myself than I could have ever imagined. But y'all, 11 years is a long time. And I can't help but look back on those 11 years sometimes and wonder, what if that process could have somehow been shortened? How many opportunities to live, to find love, to professionally advance, to contribute to the world were lost because I was spending so much time dealing with these traumas, having to work through a long, hard slog to get better. And it's not just me. How many people have lost opportunities of their own because they don't have access to the sort of counseling that I had access to. Or they might be so damaged that they can't reach within themselves and be able to pull themselves out even with the help of others. Or it simply never occurs to them that there might be help available. Imagine the contributions to the world that have been lost because of this. Imagine the lives that have been lost, the possibilities that are gone because of depression, suicide, and all other sorts of issues that people are facing every day. And I have no illusions. As bad as my upbringing was, there are people, veterans come immediately to mind, who are suffering from traumas that are even worse. Not to mention a general sense of despair. All you need to do is open up the newspaper or go online any day and you can read about how the Western world is in a mental health crisis, suicides on the rise, people feeling alienated, addictions going through the roof, lives ruined, opportunities lost. I read recently that there is so great of a need for therapists and therapy that no amount of counselors will ever be available to help everyone in need. The cost of that at a human level and at a social and economic level is staggering, almost beyond comprehension. And by the way, that doesn't even figure or take into account spiritual disconnect. Because when I was in the height of my own maladjustment, my day-to-day -day anger and frustration and overwhelm of just trying to cope, I had no space to reconnect with something bigger than myself, let alone spirituality at all. And the data is showing that this is an issue that's not just Scott Mason. Participation in religious organizations are declining at a faster and faster rate every year. And it's not clear what's replacing them. Irrespective of what anyone's religious or spiritual beliefs are, if there's not a fundamental connection to purpose, life can become meaningless even if there's no underlying trauma. But all the more so if there is. That's just common sense. 
Over the past few years, a lot of buzzwords related to plant medicine and psychedelics have become bigger and bigger parts of this discussion. There are medicines whose names I can't even pronounce, although by the time this podcast is over, I'm sure I'll know them by heart, and hopefully you will too, that have allegedly been able to turn people around very, very quickly, certainly not over the course of 11 years like I had. They promise to reconnect people with their spirituality. They promise to even help people become more creative and perform better at work. And so I've been curious about this, not only when I think about my own struggles, but I think about the struggles of other people that I know and care about, or about the people that I might not know but are in the news everywhere. I'm interested because I care about the world that I live in. I care about people. I want us to be better. I want the future to be better. But behind all of those possibilities, I also have concerns. How do I know if the people advocating for these medicines are credible? How do I know if these medicines really work? Hey, they've been illegal for decades. Surely there's a reason why. And if so, what is that? Are those reasons for illegality something that I should be concerned about? Are there side effects? Will they cause addictions? Will my mind fry if I use them? There's all sorts of scary horror stories about people who take psychedelics and end up in a very bad place. What if I'm a person of faith? What does my religion have to say about it? Or if I'm not a person of faith, what are the ethical implications? If they really can be used to help creativity and performance at work, why aren't they widely available? If they were to become legal, what would that even look like? How would they be legalized? Who would be administering them? Or would you just buy them a corner down the street? And what about the legal and public policy implications or the economic implications of this change to our entire social structure? It's a fascinating topic, and it raises a whole slew of questions that we're going to explore in depth as this season proceeds. Now, I'm a lawyer by training, and one of the things that I learned when I started practice in the Bronx, which is, by the way, really keeping it real, was how to sniff out what's not really credible and what is. For these questions to be answered, the people that are answering them have to themselves meet a threshold of believability. And part of what we're doing here in Webdelics is making sure that the experts that we present to you on this podcast, as it goes on, and as you learn more and more, are people that you can trust. They are all going to be highly respected in their fields. And they're going to be able to be people that you can believe in. We're going to be featuring doctors and scientists, journalists, business people, attorneys, and even more. All of that will give us important factual information, but there's another element of this that we're going to explore in extreme depth. And I'm even more excited about that. Because the real cost of the mental health crisis, as well as the real beneficiaries of solutions, are regular people just like you, just like me, whose lives have been changed by having access to and experienced plant medicine and psychedelics. We're going to be sharing stories with you that are powerful about regular folks who have faced extraordinary challenges come out on the other side and are willing to talk about how psychedelics and plant medicines changed everything. As our journey together moves on, 
I have no doubt that together we're going to come to a fuller, deeper, and richer understanding of exactly what plant medicines and psychedelics are, what they do, and how they work. We're also going to understand their risks and how we can make sure that they're safe. We will be able to begin to get our arms around how they can change the world. But most importantly, we're going to see how they can change each of us and those that we love. I really believe that we are on the cusp of embracing dramatic new solutions to problems that have been crippling our society for eons. It's an exciting time to be alive and witness all of this happening. And that, my friends, is why I am so excited to be on this journey and to be going along with you on it. It's all starting right now. And I can't wait for this exploration to begin. If you're as excited to go on this journey as I am, be sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a positive review or a comment if it's on YouTube. And make sure that you tell other folks about what we're doing. You can also follow Webdelix on our social media accounts. Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and as I just mentioned, YouTube. Be sure to check out our website at webdelix.com. That's W-E-B-D-E-L-I-C-S dot com. And sign up for our blog for trusted information about plant medicine and psychedelics. I can't wait to see you again on the next episode of the Webdelix Podcast.